Hello and welcome to Top Gear India. My name is Gavin Rodriguez and even though I'm an automotive journalist, this orange alert weather has me feeling a little bit like a weather boy out here to report just how bad this weather is. But alas, something to put a smile on my face is this lovely motorcycle here with me, the TVS Ronin. Unscripted, uncharted. Well, not entirely uncharted. TVS has been making road bikes for quite a while now and it was only a matter of time before they stepped into the cruiser game too with their retro cruiser bike over here that seems to blend in the design of a cruiser and a scrambler really well. I'm so sorry about the weather, but I have no other choice but to shoot in this ghastly weather. Oh my God. Now, even though most of you are quite familiar with the overall silhouette of a cruiser or a retro bike, I like TVS's approach to it. The front forks finished in gold, this silver, grey and black paint scheme finished really well with this yellow paint stripe running across. Looks really sexy. I mean, the TVS is a very dashing motorcycle. I love what they've done with the Ronin in terms of design. Now, even though it doesn't have the girth and the bulk of most cruisers in its class, it's still quite nice and compact. And I'm hoping it appeals to a lot of college kids because that's what I think the target audience is. In terms of design, this motorcycle has a little bit of retro a little bit of cruiser and a little bit of scrambler chucked in. And TVS likes to call this hashtag unscripted. They say that this is meant for customers that refuse to stay within confines of conventional motorcycle segments. But truth be told, let's be honest, it's a very recognizable silhouette. But despite that, I appreciate TVS trying to chart their own course and add something new to this rather recognizable and common design scheme. For example, the circular headlamp is an all-LED headlamp, which is something that isn't very uncommon these days. But the T-shaped signature sort of DRL really gives it its own identity. The speedometer is asymmetrical and slightly offset to the left, which may bother a couple of you people's OCD, but to me, I felt like it just added a little more appeal, a little more charm and character to this design. The exhaust muffler and the engine are all covered in black. There's very little use of chrome over here and most of the motorcycle is either painted or finished in black. I have to admit, the chain cover on this motorcycle does look a little odd and it can look quite hefty, but I'm guessing it does a decent job covering the chain to say the least. All in all, given the build quality, the paint finish and the overall finish of the motorcycle, this motorcycle is quite a looker and the TVS Ronin manages to catch your attention even from far away. Not just because of the noise it makes, but also because of this beautiful paint scheme that it has to go with. In terms of ride and handling, let me first talk about the suspension. You see, the Ronin does a great job to maintain composure and performs quite well even when you're commuting or riding with some enthusiasm. The rear suspension can have a tendency of bucking you over speed breakers, but approach a speed breaker like a good citizen and the Ronin continues to keep you comfortable. The bike is quite slim and feels light and easy to maneuver. The seat height too is quite approachable and should be easy for both sexes or shorter riders to get comfortable. Our ride was dripping wet, to say the least, so we didn't get to truly test the Ronin's potential. That being said, it did handle quite predictably and didn't keep me on my toes the whole time. The tyres are more all-terrain than purely road-focused, but they performed pretty well and didn't break traction once, even with some mild off-roading. I'd reckon these tyres should perform well if you decide to go touring. In terms of braking, it felt sure-footed and solid. Full points to TVS for giving this motorcycle performance bike-like braking. The bite feels immediate with good progression as you squeeze harder. Now let's talk about the engine. Well, in comparison to the Apache that this bike more or less shares its engine and components with, the motor is quite free revving. It's very happy to stay in its mid-range, although most of its power does lie in the top end of it. So you will feel like you have to ring it a little bit, but that's part of the fun because TVS has specifically tuned the exhaust system to sound really nice. And I mean, it sounds really good. Despite being a single cylinder, the exhaust has a decent amount of thump to it. 
and when you downshift, it pops, which just adds to the drama even further. And it undercuts most of its competitors by about 20 kilos. At a total of 160 kilos, I highly doubt any of you are going to need aftermarket exhausts on this, but we all know someone who's always going to try to get one. But for those of you that aren't that enthusiastic to want to wake up your neighbors, I can tell you that you won't have to try very hard to do so. Now most of the engine's power lies above 6000 rpm. Once you cross that number, the engine really comes to life and starts to pull with some vigor. I managed to hit a top speed of about 120 km per hour, but given the weather, given the strong winds and the wet roads, I would reckon that if the conditions were in our favour, we could probably squeeze 2 or 3 more kilometers per hour off, to say the least. Not to say that you would be trying to do top speeds run on this motorcycle, but if you ever do find yourself cruising at about triple digit speeds, this motorcycle will do it quite comfortably. Now personally, I would have loved to show you guys more shots of me riding and more shots of me doing stuff with this motorcycle. But unfortunately, the weather wasn't exactly in our favour. My cameraman spent more time wiping his lens than he did actually shooting me. Which just goes to show just how terrible the weather was. And it's no one's fault, it's just the weather gods to give us an orange alert. But here we are. You make the most with what you have. Now, in terms of overall ergonomics, the motorcycle is quite upright. Almost making you feel like you're riding a commuter. But that's no bad thing because it makes it quite comfortable, easy to handle and easy to maneuver. The only problem that I have with this motorcycle is its narrow seat. You see, for a rider of my size and my dimensions, I didn't really have much of a problem, but I can imagine, and boy, if I had to imagine, I'd imagine a bigger rider would find this slightly more uncomfortable, especially as a pillion, because I feel the pillion is better cut out for you slim folk out there. For all you thick boys and thick girls, mm, maybe you're better off looking at one of its competitors. As you can tell, the weather wasn't really on our side, which is why most of this video is not going to be me able to talk to you. And now I finally had to come back to the hotel before we could find some shelter so I can finally give you the verdict for this motorcycle. Well, when it comes to riding, riding dynamics, this motorcycle is quite sorted in that sense. I've had absolutely no complaints with it whatsoever. The ride quality was great. The engine response was really good. The bike looks stunning. I see no reason why TVS is not going to sell a whole bunch of these. Sure, this motorcycle can have a little bit of an identity crisis wherein you're a little confused. Where is it a cruiser? Is it a scrambler? Is it a commuter? But it finds a great balance between all of them and somehow still manages to undercut its competition. Sure, it doesn't have the big bike feel that most of its competitors do, but what it lacks for in terms of girth and in terms of just road presence, it makes up for in stunning looks, great technology and a great drivetrain. So, all in all, I would say that the TVS Ronin is a great package. And if you're in this class looking to upgrade from maybe an Apache 200 and looking for a sweet spot in that segment, something that brings the balance between handling and rideability, and this is your machine. Thank you so much for watching. This is Gavin Rodriguez from BBC Top Gear India, signing off.